Hey everybody, remember this? This was the UFO sample that was sent to me by a French viewer. So he's a metal detectorist and he found it on the Mediterranean coast about um, a mile inland and about a foot deep. And it's a um, shiny metal um, particle. Um, it's uh, unusual shaped. It's, it's about a centimeter uh, square, but it's got sharp edges and it's soft to the touch and it's gray metal and it's really heavy. I wonder what it can be. <laughs> Thanks to you, the YouTube audience, who suggested various tests, including a uh, radiology test, negative, and a magnet test. Here's my uh, magnet. Not magnetic. But we now have a test that I think proves definitively what this material could be. And its story is really interesting. So I've come upstairs to our living room for a really special reason. I'm going to do the test and you can decide. So here's the sample. And this is the test that you all suggested for lead. So let's go ahead and do it. In here are these swabs. Like this. And you activate them by dipping them in a wine glass, no, water, getting them wet, and then getting off the excess water and wiping the test on the metal material and looking for a red coloration. And you can clearly see that the tip of this test swab has now gone red. It's probably lead. But how did a lump of lead get to a beach in southern France? Well, that's why we're in my living room, because I have an amazing clue in this room. Come this way. That's our living room window. In 1944, a German soldier came to that very window and fired his rifle at the owners of this house and left a hole in the cupboard where the bullet hit. We open this cupboard up, we can clearly see there's a hole. But is that hole actually a German bullet hole? Well, for a short time, my wife and I did Airbnb, and we had a American Marine stay at our humble house, who actually, who's Native American, and he measured the hole with a pair of calipers and said it exactly corresponds to a German lead rifle bullet. Aha! So today, let's explore why there was a German soldier outside our window in August 1944 and why there's a piece of lead on a beach on the Mediterranean. Well, you've all heard of this, Operation D-Day landing in Normandy. Of course, 6th of June 1944. But did you know that simultaneously the north of France was being captured. The south of France, Operation Dragoon was going on. And this was an Allied invasion from the Mediterranean along the southern coast of France. The main landing sites for Operation Dragoon were near Marseille and Toulon, very important ports that the Allies wanted to retake from the Germans. They were successful and they drove the Germans up through Provence and where the Germans then stopped at Dijon, where there was an, in the end a big battle which the Allies won. I mean, the rest is history. But where the sample was found is further west, where the Germans actually were. And I think it probably is a piece of aviation shrapnel. If we had the correct test, we could test it, whether it was actually a piece of American or British lead. It could have been from a bomb that was dropped or a shell that was fired onto the Germans very close to where this sample was found. And the other piece of evidence is that it was found about a foot deep by this French detectorist. And that makes sense because artifacts descend over time 
I mean, 1944 was a number of years ago now, and a piece of lead would migrate down through the sandy soil where he found it. I bet if he looked around, there would be a crater and possibly other shrapnel in that area. So it's a fascinating artifact from history, but sadly not a piece of a flying saucer. Let me tell you a bit more about what happened to our kitchen cupboard and why there was a German firing a bullet through it. We've all heard of the French resistance. A French person told me it's more about resisting the Germans rather than fighting them. Uh, it was a big mistake to kind of fight them. Resisting the Germans meant growing a smaller turnip rather than chasing Germans around with a gun. And in fact, the Allies uh, equipped and trained groups of these people and kept them dry until the D-Day and Dragoon landings because their main mission was to stop Germans and harass them um, moving through France once the occupation had started. Every bridge was blown up and they were attacked. Many of the German tank brigades, including some of the very nastiest ones, who were in the south of France moving north to back up the, um, the German troops in Normandy, were stopped and never got past the middle of France, although they committed horrendous atrocities on their way. So what happened in our village? Well, a group of tanks probably from the Toulouse area were moving north and they needed to cross our bridge. So we live on the Dordogne River, a big river in France, and our village has a major crossing, a big um, bridge, and the tanks were coming across. Our local resistance in our village was organized by the SOE from a chateau nearby where they had equipped them uh, with explosives. And they were told to go and wire the bridge with dynamite and then poof, blow it up when the German tanks were crossing it. Um, in some ways, luckily, they didn't because it's a nice bridge. But on the other hand, it would have been a way of stopping the Germans. Unfortunately, it didn't work because the German tanks were very tall and the people on top of the tanks saw the wire <laughs> of where the resistance had wired the bridge to blow it up. Actually, no, personally, the 16-year-old who was going to push the plunger called Michel. And um, as soon as the Germans saw the wires, he realized the game was up and he ran back up the railway track to his mum's house. It's a great story. And the Germans were furious and they marched into town just down our street. The bridge is at the end of my road and they came and fired shots into people's houses. Uh, luckily, my um, neighbor, who was eight at the time, uh, he was in this house and he heard the German bullet because he was hiding and it went into his mum's cupboard and that's why we have a hole. So, you know, really, really interesting history. But maybe there is also artifacts and a history of UFOs in France. UAP are a global phenomenon. They have to take place as much in France as they do in Phoenix. I mean, it just has to be possible. If you're an alien, you're coming to planet Earth, you're going to go everywhere on Earth, including our little village here in France. So maybe one day somebody will find a very good crash site with interesting artifacts. But this story has been fascinating for me because I'm interested in World War II and the French Resistance to actually think that we found a piece of World War II shrapnel, probably from an Allied shell, is amazing. The truth is out there.